Okay. And you might, if you want this, I have a packet that I gave the AB students. These are just AB topics about limits and stuff. And maybe you would like a copy of this. I can get copies made to you guys as well. It's got limits. It's got average value, average rate of change. It's got all that stuff. Fundamental theorem of calculus. You will have the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, you guys. There's nine weeks. Nine times five, 45. Wow. Okay, why am I focusing on this? I'm not really too much worried about decay. But this problem will be on the exam. Okay, Eric? This will be on the, um, probably the multiple choice exam. And I think I gave you some problems with multiple choice with this. This says the rate of increase in our population during a short period of time is directly proportional, which means it's a multiple of the population. Do not get that mixed up with this equation, dp dt equals k times t. Okay, I want everybody to focus here. I'm not going to talk very long. We're going to do problems. And I'm actually going to let you do the problems. Okay, do you see the difference between these two things? This is PERT. This is not. If you separate the variables, dt equals kt dt, and then if you integrate, this is t equals kt squared over 2 plus c. But it looks like this one. Some of you are going to say, oh, that, that's logistic. No, it's not. We haven't, we've just talked about the logistic one. You'll never have to solve the logistic one. So make sure you read your variables carefully. So we're going to solve this one and show that that's what it is. You should know what it looks like. It will never be plus a constant. Let me say that again. It will never, ever be plus 4, plus a constant. So when they give you that on a multiple choice, they say, which ones could be a solution? You're going to throw that one out. It's quick. You know it's not right. When you get this, read it carefully. There's a P there and a P there. I'm going to get something like PERT. And so that makes that a quick problem. You have 55 minutes for 28 problems. That's how many minutes a problem? This is 7, 3. I should have that right. right. It's 2 minutes a problem. No, this is 7, 4. We did 7, 3 yesterday. Whoops. So it's just exponential growth and decay. My main concern is this. And then we are going to do two problems. We're going to do 2012 and 2011, the dip EQs on those. It's the weights problem and it's the bird problem. And they were common problems. I believe BC had those problems too. Ooh, this has been frequent today. So how do we solve this? This looks just like the parachute problem, just like the wolf problem, they're all the same. So once you do a bunch of these, when you, when you walk in and they have another one this year, that should be like a gift, right? There's no T's in this, is there? Don't let that bother you. So Eric said separate the variables. Have I separated the variables yet? No. So what are we going to do? Divide by T. I kind of remember this from last year, right? And so I get dt over p equals k dt. You don't have to leave the k here, but it's easier. If you leave the k on the other side, then you really have to worry more about the chain rule and things. So I, I don't want to do that. Just leave, just get as little as possible over there just with the variable. So what is this? No, the natural log of the absolute value of c is equal to k t plus c. There's your plus c. It is not plus the exponential. How would I solve for p now? T. t. So I'm going to get the absolute value of p is equal to e to the k t plus c. Do not do this. <laughs> and I've seen this. I see it on all levels. It doesn't matter. e to the k t plus e to the c. 
no, no, no. <laughs> that is not true. And you know what? You don't have to simplify it, so who cares? Now, what the what we're going to do here is we are going to simplify it. Now, this is population. Is the population going to be negative? No. So we can get rid of the absolute value. But it's e to the kt times e to the c. So when t is equal to 0, my population is equal to the initial population, right? We can call it that. Is that okay, you guys, over there? So if I substitute that in, I get t0 equals e to the k times 0 times e to the c. So what is e to the c? Because this is what? 1. So e to the c is equal to the initial population. Substituting that back in here, the population is the initial population e to the kc, or pert. Make the k and r, and you've got pert. That's all there is. So when you do the weights problem, it's the same thing. The weights problem will be dw dt equals some constant, and I think it was w minus a number or something like that. It's the same thing. There's no difference. All this is is it. If I get rid of that number there, then it would be kw. dp dt equals k times c. dw dt equals k times w. It's the same equation solved in the same way. And it's the same with the bird problem. So that's 2012, 2011. So I'm going to bring those up. What else? I have? Oh, one other little thing. Or another big thing, actually. Does anybody know what this limit is? You need to know this one. E. Proving that it's E is tricky. If you want me to next week, next Wednesday, I can prove to you it's E. Oh, that's kind of neat. I have to use the definition of a derivative to do it. It's, it's tricky. Okay, notice your assignment. We did the parachute problem yesterday, so we're not going to do that again unless you want to. But it's 12 and 16. And then do, do the differential equations. So start at 2012 and work backwards. And 2011, I think it's five or six. Yeah, it's got to be number five. So I'm going to bring it up. There we go. It's the same thing. Be careful with the one minus y. That negative sign is going to be a problem using the chain rule. If you let u equal one minus y, then you'll see what happens with the negative sign. I don't know. Okay, you guys? First, you start with Euler. If you want me to do it with you or you want to try it on your own. Then you're going to find a limit. This is the BC part. I think it's four points. I graded this one. Then C is to do the differential equation. This is the AB part. And that's five points. I have no idea. Hopefully you should have them in order. Anybody know what color it is? Euler? Well, we could do Euler's method because I bet you probably already forgot it. Okay. What color is 2010? Orange? No. Yellow. Is the table good enough? Yes. Now what Euler's method is doing is taking your derivative and you're going to start at a point and you're going to find another point, but not to the curve. Okay, guys? You're going to start here and you're going to go on the tangent line and find that y value. It's not going to be right, but it's pretty close. If your step size is small, then it's pretty good. Now, be careful with this one. We're going to start at x equals 1 and go to x equals 0. I want equal step sizes. How big is h? Negative, not, I want two step sizes, negative one half. Okay, we gave you the point for Euler if you went the wrong direction. It's two points, but you got partial credit if you did H being positive. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I'm in the middle of the exam. Ori, how am I going to remember what the equation of the tangent line is? It's Y minus Y1 equals m x minus x1. 
Hey guys. Hey guys. Eric. Eric. How do I find? How do I do Euler? I solve this equation for y. That's my next y value. It's the y value I start at, plus the slope. Well, that's just dy dx. And this is the step size. That's h. So would you like a table like we did? I think it helps me. Nope, h here is negative because we're going backwards. So we are going to start where? This is the n. This is x sub n, y sub n, dy dx. And then this is my y value. It's called L in the book. So the beginning, we are starting where? X equals 1, y equals what? Zero. Zero. Okay, you guys, you should do this. Then dy dx is 1 minus y. So what's dy dx? 1. So I'm going to start with this y value which is 0, plus the slope, which is 1, and the step size is what? Negative a half. <laughs> okay, can you even... Ah, just does crazy things. Ooh. Okay, we'll leave it like that. Okay, what's our next x value? We're going backwards now. 0.5. The new y value is going to be negative 0.5. Because we're starting at 1 and we're going to go to 0. It said so. I, yes. Got to ask. Yes, it says I want to start at 1 and go to 0, and I have two steps. If I was dividing by, if I wanted three step sizes, I would divide by 3. Four steps, I would divide by 4, and then I'd have to do it four times. There's not going to be more than two. Maybe three, but I doubt it. Yes. This y, new y value? It's right up here. It's the original y value, so it's y1, plus the slope, which is dy dx, so that's that column, that's that yeah, column, like times the step size. And we said, because we're going backwards from 1 to 0, you might even want to do this. 1, 0.5, and then 0. That might help you to see the step size is negative. So are we okay with this now? Nick, is this okay? Sadler? You okay with this? Okay. Are we ready for the next dy dx? It's 1 minus negative 0.5. So what is that? One point. Yeah, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs>